Hi everyone. The last time I made a video about two power supplies, an $8 eBay power supply, as well as an $80 made in Japan power supply. And I had a lot of people ask me, what about a power supply that was somewhere in between? So I went ahead and bought this Delta power supply, which is a $20 power supply which I got on Mauser. And today we'll do a quick teardown as a follow-up to the previous video that I made and we'll compare how a $20 brand name power supply does in comparison with this cheap Chinese power supply as well as a brand name $80 power supply. Alright, once again before I do a teardown, let's do a quick comparison of the different specifications of these three different power supplies. On the left we have the cheap $8 Chinese power supply. In the middle we have the Cosell power supply which retails for about $80. And then we have this new Delta power supply which I bought for $18 on Mauser. Again, these three are all the same specifications. So they are 50 watts, uh, 24 volts at 2 amps nominal. As we can see, the Delta power supply um, has a much smaller footprint than the Cosell power supply. And it's just about the same size as the Chinese power supply. And it weighs in at 240 grams. So somewhere in between the cheap Chinese one and the Cosell power supply. As for the input rating, we can see that the Delta power supply is rated for 85 volts to 264 volts input, 47 to 63 hertz, and that is identical to the Cosell power supply. And according to the data sheet, it's actually capable of withstanding 50 Gs of impact for 11 milliseconds. And in this respect, it's actually better than the 20 G rating of the Cosell. Finally, the ripple is stated as less than 100 millivolts peak to peak, so we'll do a quick teardown and after that we'll power up this Delta power supply and see if it meets, meets its specifications. All in all, it looks like this Delta power supply is quite nice, um, so it's relatively small. It has all the specifications that we want and expect and it looks like it could be a good alternative if we want a good reliable power supply but we do not want to use something like this cheap Chinese power supply which as we saw previously has a bit of, um, it's a bit questionable in terms of its construction as well as its build quality. So let's tear this apart and test this. So a quick look at the labels of the different power supplies. Over here we have the Chinese power supply. This one's the Cosell. And finally we have the Delta Electronics PMT series power supply. Alright, so I've taken apart the Delta power supply and I've also taken apart the Chinese power supply just to give you a good idea and to have a comparison between these two given their relatively close price points. Again, this is $8 and this one's $18. So, on regarding the build quality, um, I actually found that the Delta power supply used a galvanized steel case. It's actually, it actually feels quite robust and more solid than the Chinese one. But the Chinese one being made of stainless steel might be a better material, even though it's more flimsy. That aside, the rest of the case is made of sheet aluminium, just like the Chinese power supply. And I found that they actually had a nice warning at the bottom, telling you that there's a screw protrusion length that should be less than 6mm if you were to attach a screw from the bottom, or if you're going to mount this inside the chassis on the bottom. And if you have a screw that protrudes out too long, it might touch the bottom of the PCB over here. But on first impressions, you can see the similarities between these two power supplies. They both are made of the relatively inexpensive paper board instead of the more expensive fiber board PCB material. And you can also see how they look very similar in terms of the components and obviously a lot less complicated than the Cosell power supply. Again, if you haven't seen the previous video where I tore down um, this power supply as well as the more expensive Cosell power supply. Uh, feel free to check the link below, which I will link below, and you can find out my review on these two power supplies. Alright, so now let's go ahead and examine the Delta power supply in more detail. Similar to the two power supplies that we discussed previously, this power supply is also a standard forward converter topology, and therefore it's basically identical to the configurations used in the Chinese power supply as well as the Cosell power supply. So let's go through the main components. First we'll look at the main input side. So we'll have the input on this side 
and as you can see if we refer to the if we refer to the label at the front live neutral and ground so we have live coming in we have uh, NTC for some protection we actually have a removable fuse and that's very nice unlike the other two power supplies where the fuse was directly soldered onto the board so here we have our NTC we have our fuse we have some filter capacitor we have our white capacitors over here and we have a choke common mode choke as well as our bridge rectifier and this is rectified and stored in the bus capacitor and over here we have a 120 microfarad 400 volt capacitor and this one is a Altec brand I'm not sure if you can see it it's a Altec brand so that's a Chinese brand but it's actually quite common in many power supplies such as Corsair computer power supplies so there's nothing much of a surprise here very standard just the basic components and there we can see we have two main components we have two main devices of interest to us and these are this TO222 device here as well as another TO220 device over here and if you can remember the forward converter topology that we went through in the previous video you know that this one will probably be the switching MOSFET and this would be the rectifying diode so I went to look at the part numbers and if you can see this this is actually a K8A65D and it's a N-channel um, Toshiba transistor it's a N-channel MOSFET and it's rated 650 volts 8 amps 0.7 ohms so that's a nice transistor and over here we have uh, you can't really see it but that's our diode again like the other two power supplies this one's actually two diodes together this particular device is actually a short key diode so it's a dual short key diode the part number is STPS10150 CT and it's a 150 volt 5 amp each so it's a total of 10 amps if you put them together and that's our main our two main devices alright so now let's move on to the switching side we have the main transformer over here so this is the main transformer that does the power switching through this MOSFET um, it is then rectified and we we'll expect to find an inductor and where is that? we see an output inductor over here so this one's much smaller than the one that we saw in the COSA power supply but it's about the same size as the one we saw in the Chinese power supply as you can see over here so in the Chinese power supply we have the main transformer then we'll have the output capacitors as well as the output inductor likewise over here we have the output inductor and the two output capacitors and these output capacitors are actually very nice they are Nippon Chemicon they are 680 microfarads each 35 volts KY series Nippon Chemicon capacitors and here's another view, view. And you can see that they have gone to the effort to use brand name, good quality capacitors on the output where it will have a much higher current ripple than say this large bus capacitor which will not be handling much current. So I also wanted to go through some of the different components of the circuit board which I thought were nice. So we have some protection over here, NTC, and you can see that they have heat, string, they have heat shrunk there. We have the fuse that's removable, so that's definitely a plus. Someone also went through the effort of gluing down both the common mode choke here as well as the bridge rectifier and the large capacitor together so this would reduce vibration and if you remember this this power supply is actually supposed to withstand 50 G's for 11 milliseconds so that's quite a large shock rating so that's quite nice we can also see that the two main Power devices have their own small little heatsink mounted on them. So we have one there. There's another one over here for the MOSFET. And another thing that we saw on the COSA power supply that we did not see in the Chinese power supply is the use of small ferrite beads. As you can see, this MOSFET has two small ferrite beads at the legs. This gives the EMI a knock on its head. Now one thing I noticed about this switching transformer was that it was wound using LED's wire. As you can see it's these wire strands over here 
and they are actually wound, they are actually made of much thinner strands of insulated copper wires twisted together to form a larger conductive strand. And you might be wondering why is that so, why can't they just use a single thicker strand of wire? And this has got to do with the high switching frequency of the transformer. Now this switching transformer is actually operating at a much higher frequency than uh, a normal transformer. In this case it could be on the order of tens or hundreds of kilohertz. Now at these high frequencies an interesting phenomenon comes into play and that's called the skin effect. In the skin effect, at high frequencies, current actually flows on the outer surface of the conductor. And at higher frequencies, the closer to the surface the current will flow. So this is the main motivation for using Litz wire. Let's take a look at the cross section of Litz wire. So over here we have the cross section of a standard conductor. And in the Litz wire construction, we actually made this larger conductor out of smaller, thinner diameter conductors. Now the total cross-sectional area of these two wire bundles might be the same. So the total cost of copper would be the same. However, if we look at the surface, the outer surface area of the conductor, in this case for the single wire strand, this would be the outer surface area. And for the Litz wire, the total surface area on the outside of the wire is actually more even though the cross-sectional area of both wires is the same. Now remember the skin effect where the current flows on the outer surface of the conductor. If we use Litz wire to make the wire, we actually have more surface area given the same amount of copper and this allows higher current to flow with less resistance. Finally, I also noticed that Delta have gone through the trouble of using Nichicon capacitors for some of the other small electrolytics around the board. So in general, it's looking like a much better construction than the Chinese board where brand name components are used. Now the last thing you might ask is where's the controller IC? So that's probably on the bottom side of the board. So let's unscrew this board and we'll look at the bottom. And before I do that, I also wanted to point out the ground connection. So this is the ground terminal. And as you can see, they have a wire that comes out and it's screwed on with a lock washer. And this makes a positive contact with the metal case on the bottom side of the PCB, which we will soon see. So and there we have it. So that's the bottom. We have the wire. We have the ground connection, and as you can see, it's a lock washer. And then here's the bottom. So this is the bottom of the Delta power supply. As you can see, it's actually much more complicated than one would expect, and we have a smattering of different SMD components. First, if we look at the main input, the main input side, we can see the slots that were cut out. So again, this provides additional creepage distance between the high voltage side. Again, the high voltage area is demarcated by this white line. So everything here is a uh, high voltage side. And then we'll move on to the low voltage side. Over here, it's obviously where the main switching transformer is. So we have the main high current low output, low voltage output side. This is the 24 volt side. And as you can see, this is where the main switching transformer was. And if we look closer, we can see a few small ICs over here and this is what I suspect is the main controller the main forward converter controller and it's actually a very small IC, IC31 over here I went in there and looked at it with a magnifying glass and I found that the part number is listed as 22ARYR so I don't actually know what it is. I couldn't find information on it online. So if anyone knows what part this is, please feel free to tell me. And that concludes the teardown of the Delta power supply. As you can see, even though it has a very similar construction and layout as the cheap Chinese power supply, it actually used much nicer components. So it looks like Delta went to the effort of buying some good quality components and using them for the board as what we would expect in a good brand name power supply. And this looks like a power supply that I would trust much more than the Chinese power supply. And we can see that it sits right in between the price points of the cheap Chinese power supply that we 
wouldn't trust that much and the very expensive Japanese power supply. So I'll go ahead and put this back together and we'll do some quick tests to see how it performs in terms of its noise, ripple, turn on performance and so on. Just something I noticed when I was putting the Delta power supply back together, I realized that this Delta power supply did not actually have um, an insulating plastic layer in between the circuit board and the grounded chassis. And I found that even the cheap Chinese one had a piece of plastic in between as did the Cosell power supply. So I, I don't, I'm sure Delta has done their homework to ensure the proper isolation, distance and all that. It would be nice if Delta had went through the effort to put an extra insulating piece of plastic in between. Alright, so now I'll test the input voltage. So I will test beginning from about 85 volts all the way up to 265 volts input and I've calibrated it so that the output is just about 24 volts. So let's just move the Variac. So we have 24 volts at 85. So increase. No problems at all. 210 volts, 255, and 265. So there we can see that the power supply is regulating at just at 24 volts throughout its entire input voltage range. Now we're doing the same test but with a load, a 20 ohm load. As you can see the voltage has dropped slightly to 23.97 due to the voltage drop across the leads. So let's see, increase it slowly. All the way up, 200. 40, 250, 265 and no problems there at all. Alright so now this is measuring the ripple across a 20 ohm load resistor with 120 volts AC input. As we can see we have a switching frequency of just about according to my scope it says it's about 65.8 kilohertz and this is the ripple with 240 volt input as we can see, the switching frequency has now dropped to 54 kilohertz. And it looks like it's just about 25 millivolts peak to peak. So again, very good performance coming from the Delta power supply. And for those of you interested, this is again the output, but at no with no load on the output. So this is just directly connected to the power supply with no load and this is with 240 volts input. We can see a peak to peak of about 40 millivolts and has a very different characteristic switching frequency and behavior as we can see. But all in all it's still significantly cleaner than what we saw in the Chinese power supply and the Cosell and more importantly it's well within the 100 millivolt peak to peak specification of the Delta power supply. Turn on performance across the 20 ohm resistor at 120 volts input. Same test at 240 volt input. And now for the turn off performance. And that concludes the review and teardown of the Delta PMT series power supply. As we can see even though this power supply is $18, just about twice the price of the cheap Chinese power supply. The internal construction has been surprisingly nice, uh, it's used good quality components and we've also seen that the performance of this Delta power supply has been much better than both the Cosell and the Chinese power supply. So I would definitely recommend and will be using these Delta power supplies in the future for my projects. Hope that this video has been useful to you. And if you enjoyed this video, please feel free to check out my other videos, subscribe and check my website for more electronic projects and cool electronic ideas. Thank you very much for watching and hope to catch you next time.